Hey, welcome to the Science Masterclass, Mr. Salagaris. Today we're going to be looking at sound as part of our physical science unit. All right, hey, so what is sound? Sound is produced when something vibrates, that is, moves backwards and forwards really quickly. Vibrations are passed into the surrounding area and form regions of space where air particles are bunched together or spread apart. Okay, in the table below, we've got a couple of different sounds um, and the source of vibration. So we've got something like a drum that causes, uh, or the sound of a drum is produced by the vibrations of the skin. They cause um, the particles surrounding that region to either bunch together or spread apart, um, causing that sound that you hear from the drum. Okay, these areas are particles that are closely packed together, are called areas of compression, and where the particles are spread apart, it's called an area of refraction. The diagram here on the right shows you these areas of compression and refraction. Okay, we've got a vibrating speaker producing uh, the compression at the top here. Um, you've got the closely packed particles you can see uh, in purple dots. Yeah, they're the areas of compression, and then the areas of refraction are where they're spaced apart. Okay, so a sound wave is the movement of alternating compressions and refractions. Because the transmission of sound requires particles to vibrate, for sound to be produced there must be an object such as a solid or a substance such as gas or liquid to be present. Energy can be carried via waves in several types of motion. We've got uh, two types of waves that we're going to look at. One's called a transverse wave which moves up and down like a wave at the beach. You can see that in the diagram down the bottom left. We've got a longitudinal wave or a compression wave uh, where particles move back and forth in the same direction that the wave is traveling. These waves are show, uh, show regions of compression and refraction. This is what you can see in the diagram at the bottom right there. Okay, the more closely packed the particles are in a medium, that's the surrounding environment such as a gas, liquid or a solid, um, the faster a sound will travel through it. So for example, sound travels faster through solids then through liquids as the particles in a solid are more densely packed. If we look at our table here on the right, we can see that air at a temperature of zero degrees, um, the sound only travels at 331 meters per second through it. If you compare that to glass, um, sound travels at 5,200 meters per second in there. That's a crazy difference. That's because the particles in glass are way more packed together or way more tightly packed together than they are in air at zero degrees Celsius. Okay, let's talk about frequency and pitch. A source that vibrates rapidly will produce a sound at a higher pitch or frequency than one, at a, uh, than one that vibrates slower. Frequency is the number of vibrations a sound makes in seconds. This is measured in the units called Hertz. Wavelength and amplitude. The wavelength of a sound is the distance between successive peaks. This is measured in meters. If I look at the diagram here on the right, you can see um, how the wavelength or the distance between successive peaks can alter. Um, amplitude is the height of the peaks and relates to the volume of the sound. If I look at the diagram here on the right, you can see that the louder sound, uh, when you compare it to the reference sound here on the left, um, has much higher peaks or a greater amplitude. So the larger the peaks means the louder the sound and the smaller the peaks means the softer the sound. Okay, this diagram here also illustrates amplitude and how that relates to frequency. So if you see uh, the wave on the top of this, the low frequency one, you can see that um, the wavelength, so the distance between successive peaks, is wider than that of the high frequency one. So there's, it's more frequent to have those waves uh, within this period of time. All right, this diagram here on the far right shows you um, the, what sound looks like um, through a COR, which is an uh, instrument used to represent sound waves. Um, you can see that through a guitar, oboe, and piano. You can see that they're very different with the wavelengths, the amplitude, uh, and all those uh, other things that we've just talked about here. Okay, so how do we hear? So your ear collects sound waves, uh, amplifying the vibrations and converts these into electrical impulse. Your brain, brain then interprets those impulses as sound. All right, so that's it. Okay, so today we talked about um, the different aspects or the parts, the properties of a uh, sound wave. We talked about how sound has to travel through a medium, and we talked about how those mediums can influence um, how fast the sound travels. We also talked a little bit about 
um, the particles and how closely they are packed together, forming areas of compression and refraction. Hey, make sure you go back and watch this video again if there's something that you missed. Make sure you like it and subscribe to my channel. Hey, thanks for watching.